here we go. Second game of the night of our Teach You Tuesday weekly event. My name is Sky. I reach for Sky. I am joined for game two tonight with General Knowledge, a.k.a. Cliff Hengem. He was one of our coaches in game one. Uh, thanks for being here with me. Um, All right, thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. So um, this game is going to be uh, much different than the first game we had here because the first game that we had tonight um, had players that ranged from uh, 600 at the low end to upwards of 3.7. Whereas in this game, we're going to have uh, 1.1 as our low end to 6K as the top end. So we're going to have an even larger spread, larger skill, more flashy plays potentially available, and also maybe more objective taking and more focused actions in these fights and the game as a whole. Uh, do you have any sort of you know initial thoughts on the type of difference that we could be seeing with this game versus the previous yeah, um aside from the fact that this mmr average of Five game is you know roughly 3.3 versus 3.3 and the previous time. was like 2.2 versus 2.5 radiant teams turn to pick well i would imagine that we're gonna all oh, first off uh the Fire earth spirit pick. pick that's already a very high skill cap hero yeah, and that one's going to be for Witch Hunter. That's one of his signature heroes. Um, that and Cockroach. Okay, so during game one, we actually had looked up Witch Hunter on, on Dota buff and figured out that Air Spirit was the top hero of his. Yeah, he's, he's got like a thousand it. Clockwork games, and you let him have that. How do you feel about yeah, that? Yeah, well, we weren't sure actually which Witch Hunter we were going against because we couldn't tell from the emblem at first. Well, he's actually started to change his name and icons more consistently for the in-house games, so he doesn't get counterpicked. Just for that reason? Well, good Seriously, to know. yeah. <laughs> um, so we got a Magnus pickup. Dire teams turn to ban. Not sure if that'll be a mid or an off lane. I would anticipate Magnus to be in the mid lane more so. I mean, there's plenty of flexibility to him as a character, but I think I've seen more success on Magnus doing the almost uh, pseudo core semi type build where he gets like an echo saber and stuff remaining. like that. And I mean, Centaur is a really strong offlaner and, you know, the Aghanim's value with that, the ultimate and just even the ultimate as a whole is very strong allowing his team to have a disengagement or an easy initiation uh at any point once he's level six because it's global so this earth spirit could be more towards a support rather than that of an offlaner seconds remaining. so maybe like a roll four five seconds remaining <sighs> So they aren't going to let Witch Hunter, well, I mean, they picked up the Earth Spirit because he was going up against the first band Clockwork. And, I mean, I would say a lot of that is probably because of the first game, realistically. Um, if you're going to be looking at how things are going for this game, I mean... Radiant teams turn to ban. What we're going to be facing up against is kind of unknown still because we got lone druid band out slardar as well so both of those pretty strong meta bands to take right here 10 seconds remaining and phantom assassin getting banned out five seconds remaining a little bit curious but a good band because you don't want to worry about We're an empower in conjunction with ogre sort of augments on a pa uh, i mean you just got to be looking at sort of core heroes that would do Life wonders Stealer. with empower and uh, life stealer is definitely Radio one of them and uh, i mean magnus could provide a good vessel for life stealer to jump into later too so just another added bonus there ten seconds remaining 10 seconds left on the shot clock. We're going to be looking at our next pick here for the Radiant. 
Reserve time. And uh, I'm not sure what they're going to be looking at here. Now, they could still be looking at a mid or um, a range support or something in that sort of direction. Now, if we wanted to go in a mid sort of role here, if they were going in with the thought process of going against a Magnus, then I don't think we're going to really be looking at a mid core unless they want to do like a timber saw because a timber saw against an ogre magnus and a lifestealer would be a really good choice but then you know the rating would already be at three cores that are all strength melee cores and i guess the plus side of that would be they're not going up against a timber saw at least but uh, it's going to be that vengeful spirit that they're going to get here so a good support that they can run around with the earth spirit uh, if they want to have a roaming presence or if they want to have direct impact in the game in some other type of capacity. Disengagement potential with the ultimate. Negative armor as well. You know, just a nice, well-rounded hero. And it allows you to kind of push around the Vengeful Aura too. Because, hey, bonus damage for my squad? Yes, please. Minute and 50 left on the reserve time for the Dyer here. Dancing Lobster is going to be looking to pick up probably a secondary support here. Maybe an offlaner. We don't know where they want to run their Magnus just yet. Radiant team's turn to pick. And uh, now we're back to the Radiant and... Uh, I would be concerned if they oh, weren't sorry. able to... Can you hear me now? Yeah, I messaged you a while ago. Oh, no, yeah, I, I didn't get the ping for that. I don't oh, know what happened sorry. to that. Well, I've been uh, having a nice chat with myself yeah, I know. on I was this like, draft here. No, you're not really listening to things I'm saying. Was, um, but Radiant should be looking at getting another ranged hero, hopefully, against the uh, Magnus part. You don't want to go too heavy on the melee. Because they need to have something that can be more spread for these types of fights. Because Magnus is going to want to be looking at them all grouped up. Getting in that wombo combo sort of crush of him getting an RP. Disruptor ultimate on top of it. You know, just in that sort of direction. And I think we're going to need some sort of game changer out of the Radiant here. Well, they haven't picked their mid yet. Okay, well, there's their carry. Dire team band. And to me, I'm looking at Radiant, and I'm thinking that if they had an Invoker player, that could be something that could maybe round out their team. Invoker would definitely be able to work in the mid lane and then just kind of get that static farm while pressuring mid when Magnus tries to roam and looking for ganks. Exactly. Um, or even if they wanted to go in the direction of like a Shadow Fiend, Reserve time. they could do that as well because they're set up pretty nicely with the negative armor from Vengeful Spirit, the plus damage from the Luna, and yeah. I mean Shadow Fiend against the Magnus is going to favor yeah, him yeah. a lot as well. Um, now that is to say that the Dire could do a dual lane running Ogre in there to just add an extra layer of nuisance, and I, I mean a lot of the time that's a good idea to do too. Ten seconds remaining. We don't know what that's going to be the case because it looks like Radiant still need a, a mid and the Dire, they could be looking at a mid or an off lane here. They're still flex. Teams turn to pick. And there's the Invoker. It's a good call on that one. Dire teams turn to pick. Yeah, I mean, Invoker really is going to well round out the Radiant draft and with them having an Invoker now, they're not going to be as concerned for their own positioning because Invoker just needs to drop his spells and stay at safe. Seconds remaining. And with Centaur yeah. Ultimate, it should be pretty Five good for them to, remaining. you know, deal with these matchups appropriately. I mean, both Earth Spirit and Venge also. It's like they have so many characters that if one doesn't get caught, then they're able to save others. And those are good qualities to have on heroes. Yeah, just being able to save teammates in the middle of fights when everyone's not super coordinated is always helpful. That's how I usually like to approach my support roles also. 
minute left on the clock for the Dyer. My thoughts are that they may want to put the Magnus in the offlane, but then they may also have to consider doing like a 2-1-2 two, two or something in that direction. Um, what if they did something like in the direction of like a Quap or a Puck? I think Puck could provide the team a little bit of synergy with setup for the Magnus. And yeah, his what's the cooldown Puck's ult versus Magnus's? It's a lot shorter, isn't it? Uh, yeah, I wanna say so. So yeah, that could give them a nice, helpful um, part in the tempo control department. Oh, oh Dragon, Dragon Knight. Knight. Okay, well, you know, Dragon Knight as a mid, or I would, I would anticipate mid. Probably Dragon Knight mid, mag off, and then try safe lane. Yeah, that, I think that's kind of the way that they're going to look at this. They may want to rotate around the Ogre or the Disruptor, but a try lane for the safe lane, probably the way that they want to go. They'd have a lot of kill potential if that's the case. Yeah, I feel bad for that Centaur if he's going to be solo for too long. Yeah, oh, that oh, This is actually the same support duo from last game, Disruptor and Ogre. Well, I mean, there's a reason why it gets picked up. It's it's pretty it's pretty good for dealing with <laughs> heroes that like to force disengagements because you can just bring them back. Nah. Ten seconds remaining. All right. Prepare for battle. So I don't know if I had any expectations for who would be playing what necessarily. But I like what I'm, but I like what I'm seeing here for the laning. For what I think that they're going to be doing. But without getting into it too much, um, we're going into game two of the Teach You Tuesday event. So I'll give us a read off of the radiant here. We've got Annihilatron playing the Vengeful Spirit support. Minu on the Luna. He was actually one of our uh, coach analysts for the last game. So thank you for that, Minu. Uh, Witch Hunter on the Earth Spirit, Chi Mod on the Invoker, Hotaru's will be rounding things up on the Offlane Centaur. So uh, both teams have actually put their highest skill players on Offlanes, um, you know, just just as like a separate factoid. But uh, give us a rundown on the Dire, um, starting from what we've got here in the bottom. So we've got Dance and Lobster on the Magnus. We've got the Susu playing the Dragonite mid. Uh, we've got Pushin Promethazine playing the Lifestealer core. Man playing the Ogre Magi in the support role. And we've got Urbo bringing up the support disruptor. So Otaru's going in on the top lane, securing off a little bit of early vision for himself. And um, this is going to be handy because it also blocks the camp. So there's a little bit of an added layer there. And although they probably were able to sniff out that ward getting dropped with, you know, seeing him in the lane, um, that's still going to force the support to not be able to pull that and then also have to have to spend a sentry if they want to do any sort of thing to make it so that they can't pull the, the small camp or to contest um, some sort of large camp shenanigans because Hotaru's on Centaur. He wants to contest this large camp if they pull it, and he'll be able to for the most part if it's a dueling especially. Yeah, if they don't bring that ogre up, they're not going to be able to um, help contest that. And, oh, we already have first blood bottom. Yeah, it looks like he was able to skewer Witch Hunter underneath the tower, and I mean, at that, at that extent, you're... You're doomed, really. You know, early game. Didn't have. Did he use rolling boulder to get too close and didn't have it to get out? I, I missed. I missed it. I missed it. Yeah. Um. And so mid lane, we've got ogre hanging out, watching over Dragonite. Yeah, this is another call that I made in the draft where they may want to just throw the ogre into the mid lane to sack his regen, his experience, and you know, also in part some of their own mids experience um, to try and build a little bit of a better leaning stage for him. And I mean, if we're looking at the last hits and I right now, he's helping out 
but I don't think it's really doing much to kind of secure him the type of farm that he would want to have. But at the same time, part of this is just going to be mechanical work for, um, you know, just landing phase type stuff. So yeah, so it's uh, last hits right now. Magnus and Lifestealer are definitely leading that chart. And Magnus is picking up an early uh, Iron Talon, planning on dipping back into the jungle in between waves. Yeah, and this is also going to be good if they do anything to pressure him out. And that might be something that happens right here, because the Malatron has a DD, stuns him out. Dance and Lobster actually able to get the Skewer under tower again. One, two strikes from the tower, and he could follow up with a Shockwave or additional right click, but an Alatron with the DD is still a big pressure, because 51 plus 71 damage is a ridiculous amount of right clicks early in. That's not something you can really deal with. Yeah, you, and after an easy shrine, Magnus is ready to go again. Definitely making a lot out of this offlane. He's currently level 4, and the Centaur is still 3. Actually, speaking of Centaur, they're going on him top. Yeah, they're going on him, and the open wounds is going to be the thing that to try to keep him under pressure. He has a double edge, no too, so he wants to maybe try and get that off to go for a deny, but Kinetic Field will be able to spot him out. Promethean will come back in on this, and while well, he's still going into the tree line, he's hoping to get enough damage on Urbo. Oh, with the, oh he's going even deeper! Sometimes you must just go deeper in life into There's the these. kinetic field. Yeah, and now he's got no mana, and I, again, I think this is what Hotaru wants. He wants Urbo to get out of position to get a double edge off on him, but that's just going to be a kill. They would take him out in the tree line, and that was a pretty hilarious engagement. Good discipline by the disruptor, or uh, to keep the distance as well. So back into the mid lane, it's Dragonite against Invoker, one on one mano a mano. What do you want to say about this? Because Dragon Knight has starting to pull away from Invoker, but every second that it isn't time with a buddy here helping him out, I feel like is more time for Invoker to catch back up and start to take dominance in the lane. Because just one-on-one, -on -one, that should be slighted for Invoker's victory. Um, I agree. Uh, the Invoker is planning on building into the Midas early. And now that he's got a couple levels up in Exhort, his last hitting ability should be just fine against his Dragonite. And we should see him catch up within the next minute or two. So bottom lane, Witch Hunter is looking for Dancing Lobster and Man. And he was just spotted out under this ward here, so they know that something's up. And oh, he just puts down another fresh ward right off the bat. That's, that's good on him. But I mean, that's a good ward to place. And I think they expect something is there with how they are looking at the response. And right now the Radiant have good vision in the lane. They have this forward lane word, and then they also have this one down here by the bottom rune. So they can see if there's any rotations coming. And then also knowing if there's any TPs coming in on the lane or supports helping out uh, Magnus as well. Oh, looks like Dragonite out. They're not going on mid. Yeah, just going underneath the tower. He took a couple shots. Really doesn't just matter. Dragon Blood allows him to mid. shrug it off. Yeah. Yeah. And then a little static top right now. Yeah, Hutarus has been playing it relatively safe after that death. And he's going to be able to get Trank Boots relatively soon. He has the money now. Just needs to get to the shop. So I'm sure that'll be able to be uh, in the near future. And it's hard oh, to be... Oh, we got Earth Spirit going bottom. Oh, jeez. He's going in with the Rolling Boulder. Stun coming out from the Vengeful Spirit. Mina with the right clicks. And the RP oh, connects the RP. from Dancing enough? Lobster. He's able to get a lot of right clicks in on here. They're going to be have another stun in just another second. He has the Magic Stick. He could proc it and throw out a Skewer. Oh, no. He's going to try oh, and get out of it, it but it wasn't edge. far enough. Jukes the Sun Strike. And we That's do that with another Glaive. Five. And that'll take him out. The oh, top... wow. And then Centaur... Oh yeah, Promethazine is really low. 
So across the map, losing losing two. Couple ultimates used, and I mean, if you're gonna go down as a Magnus, at least you used your ultimate and you were trying to instigate a fight. Because every time your ult's off cooldown as a Magnus, you gotta be looking for that fight. And it was almost there. That could have been a triple kill. There just wasn't enough damage in the end, and he was far too vulnerable. Yeah, he let himself... I mean, if he would have hit the skewer and gotten himself over that cliff, he probably could have gotten away. I think he would have been good, too. Just the range wasn't on his side. So top lane, Hotaru's, yeah, is getting initiated on by Promazine. Throwing out the kinetic, disrupting the way he can go, and although he throws out the center ultimate, is he able to get the stun off oh. on two? Is he going to go for the double edge? He tries for it. For it. Two more hits is good he's going to need, and he's going to get punished, and Promazine is going to take it out. Oh. Sunstrike connects from Chaymod, though, so they're able to get a little bit of cleanup on it. And that brings Invoker uh, 300 gold away from his Midas, so he should have that at about the nine minute mark. What have we here? Which, given the fact that he's got boots and Ring of Bassy already, he's pretty decent timing. Knowing he's going against the dual lane for the first few minutes. And I don't think we've commented much on this Luna's farm, because she's doing okay for last hits, but realistically, she should have more in the lane right now, and some of this has got to be because Lobster is able to pressure her well and control the lane, but also the supports aren't able to do the sort of job they need to to pressure out a Magnus. He's kind of durable, and he can trade hits with that poor man shield on him especially. And now he's got the uh, headdress as well, so his regen is just going to be... He's going to be doing just fine in this bottom lane. Yeah, so, I mean, a Magnus that's building as a right-clicker against a Luna who's trying to be a right-clicker is not going to do well for her because if he dives underneath the tower right now, uses RP He's if he RP. wants to, he could kill her very easily because all these creeps being around her is just more targets that Eclipse would hit. So it's not ideal for him to do anything here, and the longer that this is a solo lane for Luna, I think the sooner it will be a death threat or a death <laughs> sentence. He's looking for it. There it comes. Yep, skewered in underneath the tower. Land of the RFP. Goes with the shockwave. Couple right clicks. One more is all he's going to need. He's able to get it. Hotaru's comes in with a rotation. Stampede. And the Sunstrike does right. connect. As right. does the double edge. And they only need one more or two more hits on him. But he's up to 200 HP. Boulder Witch Hunter misses. throws out the boulder. I mean, they would need to do the grip on that anyway. And right now, Dines and Lobster just kind of looking to build space. He's no probably TP, dead in this in any way you look at it. But he's going to waste a lot of the Dyer's Radiance time in this case. And, you know, he forced yeah. Venge to come over here and even more things being expelled. So he was able to get a lot kill, out of that. Solo kill on the Luna and he wasted three other heroes' time. Solid, solid trade. Exactly. Building that space just by being a presence. So we've got Lifestealer and Magnus at the top of the net worth. And Le Invoker's in third, now has his Midas. Yeah, so we'll see Invoker start to catch up pretty soon. I mean, but we're not going to see impact from him aside from these Sun Strikes that he's been pretty on point with. So Yeah. Maybe that's that's the type of invoker he needs to play in this game for what they're going up against. Because he really can't leave the lane, because if he does, Dragonite will pressure the tower. Dragonite, yeah, will take his tower the second he leaves the lane at this point. He's got full mana and ult ready to go. And a little bit of a scuffle. The tower's in man. Just throwing out Ignite. I'm wondering if the Earth Spirit's just struggling to find uh, easy to kill targets. Disruptor is Oh, so bottom far lane, meaning he goes oh. for the Eclipse on Dancing Lobster. He was able to juke a lot of that in the tree line, and now he's just able to take a couple hits on him and then go right back to just farming the lane. So this really didn't amount to anything against him, and he's so more durable. 1400 HP versus, you know, the 980 on Luna. 
He'll trade hits all day. Tough Not trying. Probably gonna get caught out. out. Yeah, getting hit with the ignite. The follow up with the ultimate from Urbao was a little bit excessive. But Probably kill not needed, but yeah, kill secured. I, I would have liked them to do something with Disruptor ult on Invoker. Damn, Luna is dead again. Looked like it was just that Hellbear with Magnus and Reichlix. Solo. Yeah, solo RP again. Yeah. Rampage from Hotarus. They were able to get Earth Spirit out of there, but now he needs to be careful himself. Stuck in the kinetic field. We actually had the creep. We had Lifestealer go right into the ogre and our oh, witch hunter. Oh, able to do so much work with that silence and man is taking some heavy fire here. Sunstrike off the mark on Urbo. They're going to continue to chase it in on this. There's the swap available if they want it. Good oh, kinetic what field. nice connection on that. But there's only going to be a little bit more damage that Urbo needs to take here to die to creep. What a deny. Well played. Much good's happening to Radiant's bottom that, tower. That great, was just great styling. by the disruptor. Straight styling. That's what that was. I mean, okay. if we want to break into other things that are happening right now, like we've got this uh, observer vision in the top lane that's kind of double and a little redundant. Um, and then bottom, they've got a little bit of coverage on the rune, but nothing too dramatic. Uh, one of those words is about to time out, I guess, but yeah, probably a little early on the other word. Yeah, and then Dyer have some vision of the top, like a lot of that region, and that is good for Hotarus, because he's able to get a good understanding of anything spooky that would be coming his way. Um, but also it protects any sort of Roshan that could be coming out of the Dyer, because... Although it's early into the game, they've got a Dragonite who's pretty durable, and it wouldn't be unlikely for them to look to take a sooner Roshan than in a lot of games that you could typically see. We had Disruptor throwing another ward down where they already have Vision in mid lane almost. Like, it's a little closer to the actual mid lane, but very close to where they already had the ward. Yeah, it's, it is pretty close. So, again, a little Stop. bit. And a <laughs> A little bit. So, Lifestealer um, did pick up his armlet, and the Magnus is a blink dagger on him. And Dragonite just got his armlet, too. Yeah, as that's on the courier, as, on the way. Yeah, as soon as it gets delivered. Urbao is pinging off something. He thinks that they've got some vision up there and wants to kind of check it out with his squad. What have we here? Wouldn't be entirely accurate, though. So the Dyer are getting extremely tanky. How do the Radiant look to counteract this? Just as much at this the point, they're going to have to avoid the Magnus ult and then hope to get a better engagement under tower with a Luna, Centaur, or Spirit combo kind of thing going on. But we've got Hotaru's farming the bottom lane, when realistically that should be Luna. And Luna's already positioned in the top, like she wants to try and take a fight here. And uh, this is just going to be death if she even shows herself. Yeah, she's got her helm with brown boots, and I don't think her level 1 ult is going to do anything no to this way. team right now. And we've got the stun come out from Witch Hunter, Rolling Boulder okay. connected up. Urbo oh, able to get a nice ultimate to counter. negate anything there, and there's the RP connect on too. Yep. Eclipse doesn't really do anything. They're able to take him out pretty quick, and now Tron getting glimpsed back to there. Centaur cancelled his TP. Probably wisely would have been glimpsed back or killed anyways. Well, but Urbo threw out the glimpse on an Alatron, but he'll be able to pressure this bottom tower at the least, and he's got Blade Mail finished on him. Pretty likely that he gets that one, but oof, an Alatron able to zigzag away from that. Nope, oh. skewered back. Great skewer by the Magnus. Dancing Lobster is styling right now. Yeah, and he's going to be able to pick up his double strike weapon of choice. Going for Echo Pretty Saber soon. soon. Oh, yeah. 
that echo is going to be soon. That was well. That was the Magnus that I referenced at the beginning. You know, the right. higher success I've seen has typically been with Echo. Now I haven't seen Magnus get the headdress prior to it, but I uh, also haven't seen the level of Magnus type games that I would you know want to see to really make that judgment. Yeah, it's interesting that Magnus has moved away from the more uh, mobility oriented. By getting like the four staff afterwards, just so he can be all over the place, and he's more worried about the right click build. Well, I think that's the way he needs to go, because just the strength behind him is so huge. Oh, ho, ho, we got the glimpse in on the Earth Spirit. And Ultimate has been dropped. Tornado, not going to be enough. Well, he's not a Wex guy, man. Like, no, nope. that's just that's just a tickle. Yeah, just a little bit of tickle. He does have his Yules, though, so we could see something come out of the Invoker here. Maybe some sort of solo kill potential, but in this massive team Any fight, I don't know if we're going to see it. Anything for him to get his combo off, I think Magnus... He's got to try and pick Disruptor. Disruptor doesn't have an ult. That's his best choice. Oh. What? Wafted RP? Wafted RP, miscommunication on a glimpse, and he uses Invoker spells to try and ghost walk out and it'll be the centaur actually saving the day in the end and nice nice uh swap with the vengeful yeah vengeful spirit's going to be trying to churn out a chainmail in a moment get that medallion of courage and more negative armor so i think that's a good way to go allow them to start chewing through the DK or life steal if they ever get a good engagement. Exactly, but at the same time it will leave her more susceptible to ganks because generally you're going to want as much mobility items as possible on these cores and I mean Venge right now is going to be a sacrificial lamb realistically. <laughs> She'll swap in and die and her job will be done. And right now it looks like we might have a death happen right here. Urbo's found an Alatron. We've got the glimpse back, and man is gonna be able to follow up with an ignite along with the disruptor static storm, and it's not gonna take much more than that. Pay attention next Dyer's Rip. top tower is under attack. Dyer's structure. Dragon Knight has an invis bottled and almost has money for Blink Dagger. Uh oh, we've had two rotations top lane. This is a good disengagement from Protarus. They did not want to fight that, and the Stampede was on point. And good, he was able to TP out because there was all these rotations up here. Good, everybody gets out from the Radiant. They got some chip damage kind of in, and they got out. Interesting build by the Disruptor. Not a single point in Thunderstrike yet in order to mark it for Glimpse, a target for Glimpse. Yeah, I think that's kind of questionable. Just like a casual single point is good and I mean even if he had that like early game oh, level one Thunderstrike to pressure the centaur a little bit more that could be pretty helpful for him but bottom lane Chimon found Dancing Lobster throwing out the ice wall on him and he's silenced out right now Deafening Blast 2 and Altron's nearby Witch Hunter got his ult off on him they were able to take him out alright so that was a nice little that was nice a good, engagement that was a good pickup they needed that if anything, for their morale, because Dancing Lobster has been starting to take over the game. And I think morale boosters like that are important. Even just, yes, there's value because you, they got a kill, but they also it took out like someone who is pretty it. high net worth. Exactly. And there's definitely a point in still trying and getting to that next objective. And the map control point, from the Dire is really big, so... The Radiant need to do something to assert that, which I'm sure would lead into the point you were about to make. Yeah, Radiant needs to take a tower. Any and tower. With, uh, Invoker, Forge Spirits, maybe they can pressure this bottom tower. Uh, they also Helmadom to Siege Creep, you see that? Oh, oh very good. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've done that situationally too. You know, why not? They do extra damage to towers because of those grandfathered in attack you mechanics know, of damage it. types and armor types that most people don't know about because it's not intuitive and it never will be. But uh oh, <laughs> Vengeful Spirit does the scream out onto the Roshan pit, the wave of terror, and so we've, got we've got a smoke up which smoked. 
Two smoke, two not. Counter vision happening. Ogre is still under the geist of it. Magnus has Lifestealer inside of him. And uh oh. That has been a caught out Earth Spirit. Knight's gonna be able to go off on him. Disruptor ultimate too. Alright. So he saved the RP at least. Yeah, but they're not gonna have a mass silence though. Which it looks like. Do you like... think they needed to dedicate the Disruptor Ultimate too? I think they probably could have gotten that kill cleanly. The Ur Spirit does not have a ton of farm at the moment or a lot of levels. But, you know, if you can secure the kill, now they're taking a tower. Oh, RP just gonna go off on one. Abus screwing back to his friends and family. Azuzu coming in with the stun. Oh, oh. the sacrificial stun, but he gets glimpsed back in Almost and that's just sacrifice. a double death. Just suicidal swap. Alright. It was done with love. <laughs> Middle tower has fallen. Best intentions. He was loving his heart. Got the solid high ground ward. That's gonna be great for. Oh. Nice stun off on three. EMP not used yet. Tornado deafening blast. Oh boy. Buyback from Luna. TPN. She has ult ready. Yeah, the Eclipse could drop it. Nope. Then it's back to the base. Oh. <laughs> and the whole Dire is very injured, but they're all gonna just walk away. They forced out a buyback. They don't need to do more here. And the centaur, he already uses ult. They're not going to be able to re-engage, yeah. Victory for Dyer again. So Luna's going to be working towards a Yasha into Manta. Now, do you think that a Dragon Lance is an item you pick up before that? Uh-oh, nope, never mind. Venture Spirit's getting destroyed. They got the Sunstrike going out on the Dragon Knight. Whoa, huge boulder smash out on three. And they're continuing wow. to follow up. Minu able to get a nice ultimate out. That's a triple kill. Killing spree ended. Dancing Lobster across the, the way. Able to get the Venture Spirit, though, as a Cancellary Prize. And he's got this Haste Rune. He has RP coming up in a couple seconds. He still has the Echo Saber. He's looking for it. Oh, yeah. He wants someone squishy. Okay. I don't know who it's going to be. We're under the action cam of Dancing Lobster. He's coming in. He's race car mode, and he's going to go home. He, and he's out. Um, that's least, your point. Wants to jump in him. Earlier, I think Luna would benefit from a Dragon Lance. She's dying a little too fast in these fights at the moment. And just that extra bit of tank ability and the range to stay away from... RP distance and disruptor ult. I think it'd be of much more benefit than getting Yasha at this point. What have we here? Cause oh, Manta is not gonna save him or her from the silence. Yeah, that silence is just gonna be too much. And I guess the Radiant are getting some time here to farm, which is nice for them, but it's gonna be short, short lived because the Dire are looking to invade the jungle now and Lifestealer has not only the Echo finished, but the Desolator as well. He's sitting at a juicy 12.3 and increasing net worth and Magnus has already followed up on his build with a Chrysalis and he's gonna be going into that delicious Bloodthorn. So they are ready to probably try and win the game in the next five minutes with these kind of item pickups. One more big team fight win, that Desolator is going to chew through the towers and they'll get a Rax if they get one more good team fight. But we now have a Glimmer Cape on the Earth Spirit and the completed Yasha on the Luna. So if they can take an actual good fight and get two or three heroes stunned and silenced by the Earth Spirit, I think they can have a chance. Invisibility. Just, just Minu is so fragile right now. And, oh, Centaur Ultimate going off. They want to go in on this in the bottom layer. And Alatron was smoked up. Stun out on Disruptor. Promethazine popping out a lobster. Trying to kill an Alatron. Sunstrike. Connects on Promethazine, but that's not enough. He swaps himself out of danger, but then gets walking right back in. RP connects on two of them. 
And that was a great ultimate from the Disruptor in his dying breath, but Mew, great eclipse out on both of them, and that is a killing spree ended, and a mega kill spree ended, going to Hotaru and Minu, and that is a huge gold swing. 2.2k gold, 5k experience swing, that is the exact the type fight. of fight they need, and that was almost 5k from the last couple engagements to now that the Dire have been just throwing right to the Radiant, you know? The Radiant are fighting for this. They're taking some smart fights. And, uh... Was Dragon Knight just a little bit too far behind to help out there? He had his Blink Dagger. I'm not really sure where he was in that fight. I really don't know. Uh, maybe his, the rest of his team was looking for him, but... For any matter, that's now a... The second tier one has fallen. And a little bit of breathing room, finally. Now, Dragon Knight's going to be going for what appears to be a Maelstrom next. I think that's good because in the long term, the Luna will have Yasha, Manta. And that's probably going to be, you know, within the next minute or so. So already preemptively building out oh, for yeah. the inevitable illusions was a good call on his part. Um, yep, Luna now has the Manta. Yeah, so, and, oh. and Dragonite has the uh, the uh, Maelstrom, so, you know, just on-point timing for both of them, really. Looks like Magnus just changed, changed his mind and is going to be going for a BKB after those last couple fights. <laughs> after he got controlled so hard right there, I can't blame him. BKB will pretty much spell the end of the Earth Spirit, then. Well, that was the move to make, and uh oh, Nylatron found Urbo. They're throwing out the stun on him. Dancing Lobster is waiting nearby, seeing if there's going to be any more people committed. Glimpse back doesn't connect. Boulder kick, also off the mark. I mean, the Dire want Roshan right now, and we've got ults up for both teams, for everybody now. And Invoker just got his Aghanims, this is the time to fight. If you're the Radiant, especially. It's been scouted out with a Sunstrike. Oh yeah, they did. Will Dire stay? Well, Invoker has Boots of Travel. I think he might want to consider defending that, but it looks like they're just going to give it up. They didn't even try. Just handing it right over to the Dire. Oh, the RP misses! Oh, RP missed. But they do get the glimpse back on Luna, and the Static Storm is also committed, so that's two big ults used to get the Luna. And the Invoker has made the decision to just split push and take the tower. And this is a good call, because he's going to try and get any sort of punishment on them right now. Maybe he's going to try and force back a rotation, which it looks like happened but then was cancelled. And the executive decision for him to come back to the base and defend needed to happen. Yeah. Luna, buyback could be really important for their team too. Oh, but... she got it back now. It just came off cooldown. Yeah, down. I know. Bramizine going in on Witch Hunter. Sunstrike doesn't hit anybody. Swapped to save him for a brief moment. And Potarius just throws out a little bit of damage with his ultimate. Gets glimpsed back to somewhere in the center. And, uh, oh, the Skewer misses everybody. Bramizine's trying to go back in on C-Mod. The Silence connects on three. But it's not going to be enough. Hotaru is actually landing a great stun on three as well. Promizine is continuing the chase, but he has the Aegis, so it really won't matter in the end. And down goes the Ogre. Down. That's two down for the Dire, three down for the Radiance, two from this fight. And they do get the tower, which is really what they wanted. Hotaru is able to get a nice stun blink out. He wants to hit the Shrine, too, to be able to go back in. That was a good hold for the Radiant. They lost the tier three. They lost a couple heroes. No buyback required for the Luna, though. She still has buyback then for the next fight. Exactly. And then... And look at this net worth graph. We have almost equalized. Only took a couple fights. Experience-wise, you know, the Radiant are taking it right now. And it's because of how these last couple fights have gone. The net worth isn't there just yet, but it will come. Because they're going to be able to kite and control the Lifestealer. Because the eventuality of the Lifestealer potentially needing a BKB on top of whatever else he has now could be there if the level of control that the Radiant needs starts to come out. 
in order to control that life stealer a bit more. Uh, I don't really see them getting any big items to slow him down. Sheep. Sheep would be an item that I think Invoker could be con considering. Yeah. But BKB is on his quick buy. Yeah, and then a Blink Dagger also. Which he does need that BKB if he ever gets in that Disruptor ult or if the Ogre goes on him. But it's tough. It's one of those games where, like, even if you have BKB, you can still get RP'd. Exactly, and then you'll just get destroyed by right clicks. And then that's it. Good luck. Have fun. Bye bye. And Magnus has finished up his BKB of his own. So Invoker is basically negated if they don't catch the Magnus. And that's going to be really difficult. How are you going to catch this Magnus? He can skewer, and also he has BKB now. You're oh. going to get him out of position, and he won't be able to use it? Sure, okay. We do have the uh, Ags up on the Centaur at the moment. That's going to be a big deal. We're looking at 60% damage reduction for his entire team. On top of everyone on his team being able to run through obstacles, including trees and cliffs. So they can just have... Everyone has free padding. And everyone takes 60% damage reduction when he hits R. And that makes it pretty impossible to kill people, assuming that they're looking to disengage and they're not using it as something like I don't know I mean you could use it in the midst of a fight too to mitigate damage as well I guess but you know timing is going to be important because the impact is going to be even so much more we have a smoke ink about to take out uh, centaur is he going to get out yeah, he I blinked it on the trees. Oh, what? What? Oh, wow. These chooks. <laughs> these chooks. And he gets flipped back into the tree line. Oh, no. We've got the sun able to connect on two, but he, he does hit the rage. And this was some nice gameplay on Hutaru's end to be able to kind of sniff that out, that it was coming. But he wasn't able to just make yeah, the play like, happen in time and we needed like, next level I wonder if he juice. force staffed himself out of the trees by axe or like just was a little bit too much of a panic move because he blinked into safety static storm on the invoker and RP connects from dance lobster on one end but the eclipse does too they boom to get a lot of damage with that and now oh god they're just on the death ball mid didn't even use BKB on the uh, Magnus to survive that ult Luna just kind of evaporated. Well, the ogre has a hood. Oh, I thought he had a pipe. Finish. I thought he had a pipe. Finish, but... Ready. Here come two and the third. Well, they lost one of their axe. They still have the melee. We've got the buybacks. Here's the rampage coming in for Hotaru's for the initiate. Stun coming off on two. Meatball gonna connect. Lobster trying to throw them back into the fray with the skewer. And he gets himself thrown into the air. He's going to drop. Down he goes. Sunstrike landing on Azuzu. Chima needs to be able to get himself out of this. He does have the Yules. He'll be able to use any oh. sort of Ghost Block if he wants to at this point also. Now Hotaru is continuing to pursue on Promethazine. And he could go down right now. He's getting juked very well. And down wow. he goes. They're able to take him also. And now it's Azuzu who's by himself. And they've just wiped them with those buybacks. Very nice fight by the Radiant. And now we're going to see the exact the same centaur. happen from Radiant. Radiant's going to go mid. They're going to take the tier 2. They're going to continue the push. They'll probably take the tier 3. Unless they're going to just start to split push elsewhere. Oh no, they're going for the tier 3 bottom. This is definitely the right play to make because the creep wave was already in a great place for them to be able to do this. That's a huge wave and they got a siege creep too. This should be Elena Rax, not their buybacks. But there's, oh, RP is now up. Yeah, and he did buy back right now. About 10 seconds on DK ult, see if he buys back. Center our ultimate. Dance of Lobster does land the RP with the right click, double strike hitting too, but that was over the duration of the Stampede, so a lot of that damage was mitigated. Chimod's going to be able to run away from this at this point, and now it's actually only going to be one that they'll lose, and Hotaru's, instead of their Invoker, that's not a bad thing to have, but now it's the Lumen that's going to go down also, and Chia just bought him back, so... That's 80 seconds and 85 seconds on both those cores, and this creep wave in the top lane is going to push, but they'll just clear it out, and it won't be a big issue, really. So, what, they got a tier 3, maybe they can get a shrine off of this? Yeah, they forced out three buybacks, so I don't know if Dyer will be able to like actually punish those kind um, 
to punish the Radiant, who doesn't have buyback right now. So I think it was still the right call. They probably got caught out a little too close to the uh, Magnus coming in. I think we need to see Invoker use EMP more. I mean, he's level 23 now. He's like yeah, off the like line. Yeah, all the are pretty much maxed, especially with the eggs. And oh, check that net worth. We are even, literally even, off by 10 gold. This is amazing. The comeback. Oh, well, well, down goes the vengeful spirit, and they can't really do anything to defend this. And right now, I think that the dire could realistically just try to take that tier three, but the shrine is the safe choice. Take the yeah, take the uh, Roshan shrine. Take the Roshan shrine, yeah. And then two minutes off, well, two and some change it looks like, and we're gonna be looking at a next Roshan anyway. So, um, as far as items that we've, we've seen come out recently, that. we got AC and Basher on the Life Stealer. So that's a lot of control for whoever he goes engages on. Yeah, and I guess we have a little bit of the extra layer of mobility from Earth Spirit because he has four staff on top of the Glimmer now, um, and he's going to be working towards an Agonims, which could be a divine savior for his team, or also provide his team an interesting pickoff type potential too. And yeah, I like, that's... and uh, Hotarus, I like that he's going for a heart because that'll basically just make him. Uh, I mean, I wanted to say unkillable, but that's not real, because Lifestealer against high HP targets say. is, like, his happiest thing ever. Um, yeah. But the it's return a, damage is going to be pretty huge. Against the Lifestealer, because normally a heart's such a staple on Centaur, but it also does increase the damage of the Lifestealer. Well, um, do you I'm... know how his axe works? Does that provide the strength... Uh, return to all allies based on his strength or based on their strength? It's based on his strength. Trampled enemies take damage based on Centaur's strength. Okay. So all of his allies would get his strength value of the Stampede, so, so in that getting case, heart buffs yeah. is old. The heart's yeah. probably still a great item. Mm -hmm. And he'll be over 4k HP, so that's kind of cool. <laughs> Mjolnir complete on Dragon Knight, and that pipe is now done on the Ogre. That pipe's going to be a big deal for both himself and his Disruptor buddy to not get so destroyed from that Invoker in the fight. And it doesn't matter that Disruptor has his Glimmer Cape because he's still getting melted. Right. Um, I would like to see something come out from one of the supports to get to remove the silence from the air spirit in case they were to get engaged on. Yeah, I'm surprised that the Radiant didn't get any sort of mech or burst heal type item, especially considering the type of fight that the Dire bring. Um, True. Even like a pipe, you know, just like any sort of utility item that just helps everybody out. We're not seeing any of those items. To start giving them the favor in these team fights, which they have been winning when they actually get the right engagement. And the problem has just been Dyer's usually gotten the upper hand on engagements. Oh, Hataru is almost able to get that blink strike off on Azuzu. And Boulder kick off on Promethean. They're not going to be able to see it there. And uh, the net worth, by the way, already dipped back down to 5k in dire favor. So there was a glimmer. Was that? Did that include a team fight in that dip? Yeah, or is that just yeah. the uh, difference in the uh, not yeah, having it was, a, a Rax? It was the uh, Rax and the Shrine. Oh, okay. Yep. And Venge. Rax, Shrine, and Venge. Along with, you know, farming and whatever. Mm hmm. Rip Roshan. 
He just picked up on the Magnus, so he's gonna feel free to engage wherever he wants. Yeah, and I mean, look at him. His farm is off on another planet. He is gonna have that Bloodthorn really soon. Him and Life still are leading the net worth chart still. I think since like the beginning of the game, they've been one and two. That is not wrong. And I mean, I guess we're not seeing all of the uh, net worth spread so poorly for the Radiant because, I mean, it's still the three of them following them. But we do see a pretty big disparity if we're going down to an Isletron on the bench. Yeah. <laughs> That poor, poor six position bench. Oh, did we catch Stance and Lobster in the tree line? I think we did. Rampage used to try and continue the pursuit. There was the Eclipse. Lucent Beam, I All mean. Right. And that's, that's, that's uh, Magnus number one. Are they going to be grouped up enough that an RP is going to be effective? No, it's not. He's going to get stunned out. He'll get silenced and controlled. And Great timing on that smash and silence. Oh, BKB. <laughs> Casual. Bottom tower. Casual BKB TP home. It's that first time that you put that item there and it had a different oh. item there the whole game sort of deal. That's my thought. Yep. It could have not been, but I'm just going to say it was that. Yeah, we'll give him the benefit of the doubt. So Lifestealer has an Abyssal Blade on top of everything else that he has here. So he's looking pretty scary for the kill potential that he's going to have against the entire Radiant, really. Oh, boy. I mean, he backed up with so much armor and attack speed from his squad. I mean, Dragon Knight has a Mjolnir. Like, him throwing that on any of his buddies. Ogre got Vlad's, too, to just help be more of a support aura-type build. And then we still have Empower. Yeah. So, given, like, the perfect fight for Dire, he could just obliterate the entire team on his own with the Empower plus the RP. And they have a, a lot of control on their team as well for that life stealer between the uh, kinetic field and the ogre stun and the dragon knight stun life stealer shouldn't have a problem being kited well this bottom lane looks like could, it could be the next place that there could be some murder afoot because witch hunter's nearby and he's rolling boulder forward did they find him in the tree line? No, they didn't. Very close, almost. But they're grouped up as four in the top lane. Ags was completed by the Earth Spirit, I think, in the last two minutes. So he has that now for either saving or engaging. Here we go, the Radiant half There's the... no TP on the Centaur, actually, at the moment, so he, he is, is fully committed to this push. He just travel. Oh, sorry. Yeah, he just switched to that. Uh, wow, they're just letting Lifestealer destroy the tower pretty quickly by himself with no one really caring, because he had, like, plus 311 damage, and uh, Hotarus is, back, is just taking their axe. He's got the range. He canceled... Oh. He had three TPs canceled, and canceled. now it's just Dragon... Dance and Lobster that are here. Oh, well, that's because this is fight breaking out here. Earth Spirit saves the Luna with the ult, but kicks her away from base, and she's running. Yeah, she's still alive, though. 40 HP, that's changed in honor. And is Invoker going to be able to get out of this? No, he's going to go down. He does have buyback if he needs it. <laughs> Luna is only a couple HP away from death, and Hotaru's isn't going to be able to do everything to save her here. And I think that Earth Spirit needed to buy back here, but I'm not sure if they're going to be able to defend. Dragon Knight's blinked forward onto the high ground, and he's just destroying this building. He's got his half an ult left. Well, well Centaur's trying to do something here. Blade Mail proc is very nice to try and mitigate some of the damage. And the Luna Eclipse is going to go out. A lot of this damage going out on Promethazine, 
but he's gonna get glimmered from his squad and now he's just jumping into a creep and he's just gonna go home just walk away haha ha, ha, everybody running over the tree line freely and the rp actually connects on two so that was actually a huge disaster for the radiant oh. Now Chaymon forced to BKB in the back, glimmering away with his no detection. Block. Nope, they found him. Well, I mean, he had BKB before that anyway. But down goes the tornado. He's gonna get glimmered back. There's the meatball too. Disruptor could go down. One more hit. There he goes. Chaymon down also. So for me, they didn't add a triple kill. There's the, the everybody. Wow. Well, <laughs> a GG from the Dire, and uh, they're able to take this game pretty decisively. Yeah, Although it never seemed like they were really, really behind. Well, but there were a lot of times that it felt like they could still very much lose, and the Radiant was able to respond with lots of good fights, good follow-up, but then they just end up getting picked or... These small little engagements where they just lose one or two here and there. Right. And they just didn't yeah. have any good full team heal or utility items. And I think that would have done wonders for them as a group. They couldn't put all the pressure on just the centaur ultimate for heal, mid or excuse me, for damage mitigation. They needed to have things in the direction of like mech or guardian greaves maybe type build for the earth spirit. Or, I mean, he hadn't earned, but how far is that really going to go, you know? Yeah, and if you're not getting the kills early enough to feed those earned charges, it can definitely feel like it's a waste of an item. But yeah, Greaves, I think, would have been the item instead of... What did he build first? Did he build Cloak four, first? Four staff. At, or, yeah, Cloak, then four staff after that. Yeah, I think the Cloak is just a little too underwhelming of an item given the kind of fights that they were looking at but let's not let's not jump into it too much here let's see if there's anyone available that is willing to do a panel type chat for us to kind of get a little bit of a better perspective of the game from their end all right all right so i'm going to pop in there talk then do the thing with the voice switching and the stuffs. Gotcha. Yo, guys. How you doing? What's up, Scott? Good game. That was a pretty intense game. A lot of back and forth. That was fun. Um, that yeah, net that worth fun. graph was, like, <laughs> dramatically in dire favor, but then literally brought back to being equal again. Yeah, yeah. We kind of threw a few you, times, sticks but... from it. Well, I mean, you, you did. You guys did bring it back to being a literally equal net worth game, um, and you know, I did not know which way this game was gonna go the entire game. But uh, you know, well done for your performances in it, and um, you know, let's kind of have like a little bit of a, a, a chat of how the game went for you, some of your thoughts into the draft and. Um, the way that, you know, the communication kind of panned out for your team for, um, you know, just kind of giving an overview on the way the game went and, uh, you know, how we can kind of build off of it. Um, so we don't have a quote unquote <laughs> panel for this sort of chat for this time. So, um, I don't know if the best course of action would be for it to be myself along with general knowledge and then uh, Lobster and Hotaru's, or I think that would probably be the best thing if you're open to that. Um, it oh. doesn't matter. I don't <clears throat> think many people are, like, talking anyways. <laughs> well, yeah, well... You know, it just... I just got back. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to mute everyone but four people so they can talk about the game. No, no, as far oh, as communication, okay. like, a, you know, I'm a, I'm a low and mark player. Um, but with Lobster, like, he, uh, 
I think I think it's important knowing like when his power spikes were, and so then when his power spikes were, then we could like okay, this is a nice objective. So like okay, he had blink. So once he had he had blink, farmed. You know, we all grouped and uh, went top, and we stayed top with the you know the imminent threat of RP. Uh, and it was just like I think you know his his communication was was pretty pretty good. Um, helped us for sure. Yeah, it's important when you have a character like um, like a Magnus that you're consistently using your RP, trying to keep it off cooldown and just continue to force fights. All right. Now, again, I'm gonna you know always bring this up to you, Mister Clockwork Man. <laughs> Why do you never get a he's, mech? He's in the ready chat. He's in the ready chat. Oh. He's deafened too. Probably. Oh, there you go. Where I mean, I I moved him in here. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what magic is this? Mechs don't. They don't build mech on our spirit anymore in the pro scene. Oh, you got really Wait. salty this game. Oh, I'm sorry. Wait, what'd you say? Oh, I just. Uh, I was commenting more on, on uh how I still feel like Earth Spirit should probably get mech, but he disagrees. I completely disagree as well. I just think they should have rotated earlier. They came top after after Centaur got fucked. <laughs> so, Wait, so Hoda, do you think, think that you, you should have had a mech, or what? Oh no, I don't think we should get a mech at all. Okay. The w one thing that should be taken away from most of these games, uh, specifically, like, at least games that are captain's mode, are way to identify your win conditions. Those are like really important things. Um, uh, like, I don't, I don't know what your spirit player's name was, but he kept wanting to do things. When, <laughs> if you think about the game objectively and how you have a list of goals and how you get from point A to point B to point C, point D, that your team, the team that you drafted, should have goals and a plan ahead. And you shouldn't try to force anything that is that you don't have to do unless you're like dramatically losing the game. <laughs> yeah, I didn't skill stun on my land. That was like a uh, like hee hee ha ha or whatever. <laughs> but um, that's why I did. That's why I never stunned the life stealer. But, yeah, I was trying to dodge a stun, and I was like, wait a second, this guy's not stunning the whole I just, time. I just <laughs> assumed you were you would dodge it anyway, so I didn't even skill it. Yeah. Um, but things that for the dire side at least is like. We knew when you picked Mag Ogre, you're gonna pick a melee carry. That was really obvious. Yep. And you had Dragonite, and your Dragonite went armlet, and your Life Stealer is an armlet hero. So knowing your timing pushes and when you can get these core items and power spike should be like things you determine as a team. It, whether it be from simple communication of things like, "Hey, I'm buying armlet, you're buying armlet, we're buying blink, we're gonna have three items, and then we're gonna push." And after you you guys pushed the top lane, you took our tier one and our tier two, and our players wanted to try to defend it because. There was some sort of sense of urgency that we had to defend it because we were losing towers. Like, yeah. I forgot who said it, but they said like, "Oh, can we defend this?" And I said, "Why do we need to do that?" I didn't want to just tell people what to do because one, I personally I don't know you people, so you probably don't want someone who's just telling you what to do all the time. Was like, that's one, it's not a fun interaction with me, and two, I, this is we're here to learn the game and as a, like a larger scale. So like trying to say like we need to defend it just because because we have to. The only things you have to defend are your throne. It's like, you can lose all your racks and still win the game. So you, have, you do have to remember that. And if your composition is more scaled towards the late game, if you can get there correctly and on time, then those are something that you should be aiming for. Forcing us to defend in tier two and then getting a, getting wiped like twice was like a huge setback. Um, during the like midpoint of the game, I tried to take over as captain because no one's really like shot calling. And obviously I don't expect a lot of people to shot call on people that you don't know very well. I don't know how well you guys know each other, how often you do this. But I always said like, we were gonna defend these. And, I, and every time uh, like uh, I was trying to communicate with the invoker player, uh, whatever his name is that when we were going, when they would engage, I said the life sealer is gonna hit, is gonna hit the tower and the dragon knight's gonna hit from afar and the supports are gonna be in the back and you just gotta watch for mag clarity. And we would, I would try to connect my spells with the invoker as many times as possible. I would tell him when I was stampeding and when I was blinking. And these are simple two-way communication skills that you can use live in your pubs to grind all the way to 6, 7k just by telling someone, like, hey, I'm blinking and I'm stunning. And mo my point is that, like, yeah, there's, like, a lot of small micro um, tips that you can be learning throughout all these games. 
But before you, I feel like a lot of players focus on small micro things. You should be focusing on macro. Like, how are you gonna? How are you even gonna take this mid tower? How are we gonna take the second tower? How are we? How are we even gonna fight them? So that was the main objective in our game. Is how are we gonna fight this dire side when we actually couldn't fight the dire side? And I was actually completely willing to give up these two towers so I could get farm on more of my cores. Now, if the Dragonite player um, was more prepared and you guys were more coordinated for your dire push, you guys probably actually could have taken that racks at like 17 minutes. If the Dragonite was like mid or at our secret shop or something like that, while well, you guys were already at the high ground. And I and I, all our players communicated pretty clearly that like if they go for racks, we'll have to stop them there, and we have TPs ready. And but we. This, the sense of urgency and like tilt that you're like losing of some sort caused a lot of mistakes. As you notice that I said like, hey, we can still win this game, and then we we were able to coordinate it. Like, the more they push up their lanes, the places for them to farm, and like for the places for them to farm are more spread out, which allows you for more pick potential. Uh, one thing we didn't do on the radiant side at all was smoke. Like, we we used one smoke, and then uh, I whiffed it because I didn't you know. Can't get your uh, our, our our teammates are ready, but once again, it's like a it was just like another mechanic that we just didn't use. And once we started getting ratted, we killed the mag like two or three times, and I think we even killed uh, we killed three of you at the ancients. Like you guys were over always like overextending because you felt you had a large lead, but I knew that my team had much better team fight, especially even though we were probably so far behind. I knew that there, there are always win conditions in the game, unless your throne is destroyed. It's always a win condition. Like, I think like a long rant. No, like no, a, no. I think that was I think that was a really good that summary. Was awesome, dude. Um, yeah. There was a lot of good points there I that concur. people can take away on it. Um, yeah. And I think you made a lot of really valid points for sort of the itemization and especially the types of things that you need to realize with. Um, towers and like the realistic overall objectives that it is okay to sometimes sacrifice towers just dependent on where your team is at in terms of how you can respond to them taking those fights and you need to realize that you don't want to just throw your bodies at those buildings to try and stop the inevitable because then that will kind of have your team fall into this pattern where you're just dying and taking mismanaged engagements or uh, your spells could not be aligning with their cooldowns properly with your ultimates and stuff like that so this just ties back to you know communication in some extent and i know for this event especially it's hard to have someone that act as a dedicated shot caller since it is a um you know it's a in-house event with people who have maybe never played with each other before or if they have been in the event a couple weeks in a row then maybe they have so who knows um but that isn't something that you can really dedicate yourself to in just any game of dota so that's a skill that's valuable to learn which is what this environment is also giving you an opportunity to do in it um and this is probably the best environment of those types of opportunities because everyone's going to have a microphone for the most part or at least be you know conversational to some extent and able to work through some of these things it just comes down to one person being the decisive decision maker and then everyone just kind of following suit and yeah you could fuck up but sometimes a unified call is better than a few people acting independently. Uh, Lobsta, do you have anything that you may uh, want to like bring up or touch upon for you know the things that you were maybe looking for yourself or um, your team was looking for in terms of itemization for when you were able to look to push and stuff? I know Hotaru said a lot too. Yeah, but, no, uh, what he said was very good. And he was talking about a lot of the same stuff I was going to talk about knowing your power spikes, which is, um, yeah, uh, knowing your power spikes. And especially when, like, uh, I think they'll agree that I was in pretty much complete control for guiding the team about objectives and what we wanted to take. And I was very clear with them about how we were going to go about doing them with our smokes and all that. And, uh, 
I don't know. I just think, uh, what was I going to say? Or something else. Uh, I know that, uh, that as far as, especially in pubs, it always seems like, uh, I think what, our, what the Centaur player said um, was that it always seems like, oh, we have to do this, we have to do this. It's always like a sense of urgency when, uh, I don't know, if I felt like this game was way more slowed down, even though like we got wiped twice or whatever, you know, we, we almost threw. Uh, it was still like a, like a sense of like, oh, the game's not over, like, or, you know, it was something like a big disaster. It was just like, all right, the game's fine. Like, we know where we're at still. Uh, we still have an advantage. And like we talked about earlier, the, the wind condition, we still have a, like a, a wind condition. Uh, but I think that's what, it, at least in, in pubs, I think it is, I need to have a better mindset, at least of, of just slowing the game down and not have like this big, like, oh, we have to do this. Everyone needs a TP now. Everyone, you know, run or, you know, it's like, almost seems like everyone is just like, uh, you know, super hyped up or super like urgent uh, to do things when really everything's very exaggerated. Code. Right, exactly. exactly. Okay. You have to remember at the end of the day that even if you're not playing for a million dollars at uh, like a LAN event or anything, that you're actually still playing a video game and there's no, no one's pointing a gun at your head. You're still just like, you're still just a guy or, or a girl or any, whatever you want to be playing Dota. <laughs> <laughs> you know, 27 very PC. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Um, why not? But at the end of the day, you're still playing Dota, and the, at least for people in competitive gaming, that a, a mental fortitude is at least half the battle. Like obviously, tilt is like this major thing that we always talk about, and like Twitter and Reddit, like oh he's tilted and this and that. But people like like oh no, I don't get tilted, but it's not actually tilt. It's actually like this pressure, like that I have to do something. But a lot of the time, unless it is actually the game losing exact thing like where you where like the smag like polarities all of us at the very end where you, you literally just like a vessel a link or something like these small micro plays that it's, like, it's, it's just a game and you need to stay level-headed and thinking you have to do a lot of a lot of things like uh i, I was telling the air spirit player during the game like it, you i understand that you have a job in this game and your job is to gank it's the fourth position and at earth spirit those just go hand in hand but we honestly couldn't gank. We didn't actually like have like the firepower to kill like life no, stealer and dragon. You really and, didn't, and, and you wouldn't have it at all. And so there, are, there are other things to do. This isn't something that I learned actually by myself. That I realized that like as a ganker, there there are other things you can do. You just because your job title says ganker, it doesn't mean you have to be a ganker. You are playing a video game in a mythical world where you can do literally almost anything you want. <laughs> um, a great example of this is one of my old players, Whitebeard. Uh, he's currently on Team Fire. He just didn't make he didn't make a major today, but he was, was considered probably one of the better supports in North America, and he played our fourth position on Team Archon. When in Shanghai, we were actually doing a bunch of practice, and he was playing Elder Titans. When Elder Titans was very powerful, and you would just be level two, you drop a spirit mid behind their, their mid player, and you just stomp, and then you just kill the guy. But eventually. After we played, uh, I think it, after we played not wings, uh, or we played C deck and we played IG in scrims, and we realized that it wasn't working anymore. But we still had Elder Titan like already picked. He bought Iron Talent. This is also when Iron Talent was like mega overpowered. But he bought Iron Talent and just farmed items, and then he came out as another core hero instead of wasting his time feeling like he has to gank, you know, like. Monkeys Forever is just saying, like, oh, I need help, I need help. It's, there, there are honestly just times in life where you just say, I'm sorry, I can't help you. Like, that's just literally how it's going to have to be. That I, I'm going to do something else, and it, it is going to be for the betterment of the team, even though it was, like, what I'm doing is not my job. I think uh, one of the things I remember I wanted to talk about was whenever I go into any game, I look at what our heroes are, and I look what their heroes are, and I think about how the first few minutes should play out, like, not an ideal world, but just like how they could play out. And going to this game, I kind of told my team is, I'm going to place a ward in my offlane where I'm going to see where their supports are at any time. And I know that if I see their supports, my mid is safe and my safe lane is safe. And whenever I saw them missing, I would call it. And uh, my team was able to play much safer. And I think it helped out a lot. And at that point, I'm able to apply pressure to the lanes. And then once I saw that their supports are back, you know, our team was able to start pushing in mid and safe lane. And it's all just, you got to look at what 
because we saw their heroes as Earth Spirit and Venge, and those are two heroes that can gank very easily, very early. And uh, so that was like my biggest concern going into the game, was looking out for that for my team. And then we were looking at, looking forward into that. Invoker mid, there's not much you're going to worry about that. He's going to get his mice and do his thing. But when they have a Luna safe lane, she's, they want to prioritize her farm. And if she gets enough farm in the beginning, she's gonna they can just translate that early pushes. And so I was looking for that. My team is, I was ch making sure the Luna wasn't getting too much farm, making sure other lanes were doing well, kind of keeping track of these things in my own mind and how I knew we should play the game depending on how the game went, whether we start losing lanes for whatever reason or if we were winning our lanes. And that's, I think everyone should do that going into every game is look at your team, kind of look at how this early game is going to play out and how you should respond to whether or not it's going in your favor against your favor. That can also give you valuable information or insight for yourself to know whether or not your team can perhaps infiltrate their jungle and, you know, take a level one fight or, you know, take their bounty as well, you know, something to that extent too. So, you know, looking through all those theories of, I guess, you know, the types of situations and how it could kind of pan out. Uh, I mean, it's very theoretical in nature or, I don't know if that's exactly the right word, but um, rhetorical? I don't know. Very, you know, because you could be thinking of so many different situations that could be occurring for how these fights could instigate and then how you would want to react to them. I don't know exactly what word choice I went for it, but being able to envision the fight that you could have happen to know what type of character would be ideal for you know the first five minutes of the game to know that you'll be able to get farm versus who up, whoever you're going up against um, or that you know that you won't die or you'll get experience just depending on exactly what type of role you're looking to play. And one thing also to, to learn about your role in each game to take it, um, I'm not sure if it's forward or backwards, but. Yeah, these games were captain's mode, and yeah, we were all on Discord. But something to think about and to improve yourself <laughs> individually is just thinking about what you can do in your in your solo queue game that you're going to be playing, just so you can rank up. Just what can you do to the, like, the best of your ability? Do do what you know what you can do, and don't try to do like something like over the top, like oh, I'm just going to play Meeple because Meeple's super good here or something like that. Play a, a, a role you you know you're good at, and B that you can understand how to complete the game as that hero. Whether you are someone who thinks of the game from, I started the game and I'm ending the game, or someone who even reverse engineers it. That's actually how I think of a lot of games. Instead of starting like, oh, I'm level one, I'm gonna get level six, this, this, and that. I actually think about how I plan to win this game on Radiant. I wanted my Luna to get farmed, I wanted my Invoker to get Octarine Ags, and then I wanted to get, I want to get Ags Blink, and then I want to take a team fight where we just done them for like 35 minutes. But how do I get to that point? First. Wait, I need to take Rax because that's how we win the game. How do I how do I take Rax? Well, I need to like clear tier twos. Now, which lane do I want to hit in terms of tier twos? Well, most likely it's going to be the bottom, because like Luna will be pushing that lane. But and for Luna to push that lane, I need a Luna to get farm. So how am I going to acquire farm for Luna? So these are like a small mental checklist thing, and you can go even farther than that. We're going to use Venge Inner Spirit to secure the Luna lane, and then try to gank mid to secure the Invoker lane, and I can just return farm or farm with my return skill um so as a player you need to think about even in all your solo games how you're going to win that game whether you think of it from point a to point z or from z to a like people think differently so there is no one really answer to say like oh i know exactly what i'm doing those are all really good points i think So I think that gives a pretty strong uh, summary and analysis for the game. And uh, Hotaru's, dude, absolutely appreciate you popping in for the night. And your insight has been uh, greatly appreciated. And I think that has provided a lot of good knowledge for the players that are here to help them apply those sorts of skills or theories to their own games to try and see some, you know, gradual improvement in their overall play style. Um, you know, Dance and Lobster as well. I really appreciate you being here for the, for the whole night. Um, unexpected, and I hope you enjoyed yourself because uh, 
I mean, this is an event that I want to try and do every Tuesday if possible. So I, I think, you know, trying to continue this sort of uh, community involvement of people helping other people try and improve uh, as collective groups rather than these more uh, constrained universes will allow us to be better teachers, but also to be better players by being able to speak through um, the whole process of what it takes to overcome certain objectives in the game. Yeah, thanks for having me, man. I've uh, always been looking to try and help the community a little bit more, but I was not. I was free tonight. So worked out good. Worked out. Good <laughs> well, I mean, I'm open to uh, in the future moving it to like a different day of the week tuesdays just was very convenient for me for the uh for the last like five or six or so but uh that could still change in the future and uh, i don't think you knew what was going on tonight hotaru's but thanks for popping by for sure yeah Josh, my boy ensign sd card who uh oh ensign my man he was watching you and I saw it, so I said, all right, let's see what's up. <laughs> um, but yeah, just make sure, you know, big things to take away that I, I can't stress enough is like, don't worry about micro play. Like, micro play is something you learn from hours and hours of the game. Um, I worked in Pro Dota for two years. I coached, well, like, I don't know, 20 tournaments, two LAN events. But at the same time, I played Dota for 12 years. So, like, I'm, I don't know how many years you guys have been playing Dota for, but Steph, uh, I'm assuming most people have not played Dota as long as I have. Um, so my, a lot of my like micro gameplay, even though I don't play Dota anymore, uh, I, I work in other games now, but uh, just the micro gameplay will come at when you just literally put hours in. I have 10,000 hours on Dota, like active gameplay. So just try to focus on macro how to complete objectives, how to communicate with your teammates. Um, this will go past the league, and it'll go past into your individual self, not only improve yourself in-game, but out-of-game, and in, onto games that you go and play, whether it be Counter-Strike, Overwatch, H1Z1, Rocket League, or any any of these games in the future. Unless you go play Hearthstone, then you're just going to talk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, flip a coin, right? <laughs> okay, you play flip a coin. You just go play roulette at that point. But <laughs> the, the, there are things that in-gaming, and competitive esports that you can learn from that, that I can help you improve you as a person outside of gaming and just outside of Dota. Thank you for the advice. Appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah, that was solid, man. Cool. Well, I am going to 